Hello and welcome to the second part of this tutorial where I'm going to color this sketch with this limited color palette video. If you have not watched the first video, you can check out the link in the video description below. The colors that I'm using today are from Renaissance and this is the intense line of watercolor. This is transparent yellow, PY150, cadmium red pale, PR108, and this is cobalt turquoise, PG50. PY150 is also known as nickel azo yellow from Daniel Smith. It's a very versatile color for mixing and it's very transparent and this is cadmium red pale which looks like an orange it's an opaque color i actually wanted to choose the other red from this set that i have which is carmine which is a cool red but the roofs of the temple they are orange so this is the color that I picked instead. Maybe I do need to use carmine later on. And for the blue, we have cobalt turquoise PG50. This PG50, it's very different from Daniel Smith's PG50, which is cobalt teal blue. This is Daniel Smith's version of PG50. You can see it's very different. This is more greenish and this is a more subdued blue. And now let's mix some secondaries. We have PY150. Notice those dots there, I need to, those particles there, I need to dissolve them more completely. So I'm going to add blue to this cobalt turquoise to see what sort of green we can get this is a nice bright yellow green next let's have cadmium red pale and cobalt turquoise this is a nice neutralized gray but i can see that it's not very dark and lastly for the orange we have transparent yellow and cadmium red pale actually cadmium red pale yeah it does need yellow in order to get that orange on its own it's still a bit more reddish than orange this is a very nice intense orange i like it the swatches have dried very nicely so we can get very nice greens the red cadmium red pill this red is not as reddish uh, not as strong compared to other reds so i may have some issues later on when it comes to mixing orange you can see this orange here it was more vibrant when it was wet but when it dried it dried lighter this can be a nice color for the shadows All right let's paint let me start by wetting the sky first for the mountains in the background let's have a little red and cobalt turquoise and this is a pretty nice color for painting shadows so I may want to use this to paint the shadows on the ground shadows cast by the trees on the right side I like the it seems like there is no there's no granulation I thought there was going to be some granulation and let's paint the roofs so cadmium red pale not a very nice color for mixing because it's opaque i think it's best used as a color to cover over other colors over something that you have already painted because this is pretty opaque and if you don't want it to be opaque you use a lot more water then it loses its intensity all right just for comparison purposes i'm going to paint 
uh, PY150 with Carmine. This version of Carmine from Renaissance, this is PR48. So, see this? This is much cooler in terms of color temperature. Maybe I can add that to this just to make this a bit more reddish. For the greens, I'm going to have some greens here. I'm painting with yellow first. And I'm going to mix the greens on paper. So we have some yellows here. Let's mix some browns now. This is a bit greenish, so maybe more of the cadmium. I'm also going to mix some darker greys for this um, area here below the roof, which is very dark. I don't think I will be able to get a very dark value, a color that's close to black with cobalt turquoise. So I'm going to introduce another color, which is Helio Cerulean, also from Renaissance Intense. This is PB153. Many brands would call this Thalo Blue. Let's see if I can create a mix that is as close to black as possible for those really dark areas. So with Thalo Blue, it's so much easier to mix the darker colors. I forgot to color the statue here earlier on. Let's paint another mountain that is nearer to us. Last thing for me to do is to paint the shadows for the building, for this structure. Probably should have painted the shadows the first time I painted the ground because it's, the, it's really the same color. So this structure, the right side, it's in shade. This is the part where it should not be so tall. Maybe I should have painted the ground, I should have done that the first time. Painted the ground first and then paint the shadow. Alright, it still works. Because of the glazing effect, it still works. I actually wanted to have this part of the ground white, but in the end it doesn't look right. So. I had to paint over with another wash of grey. You know, I think it looks a bit better. So now the only white is the white on the structure here. So this is the completed sketch. I think the colors, they came out quite well, except towards the later stages, I had to introduce Thalo Blue, or in this case, Helio Cerulean to get those really dark values because with the initial palette the tinting strength of these colors they are not that high so i'm not able to get those really dark values i need something uh, with higher or more powerful tinting strength like phthalo blue quinacridone colors or carmine which is not included in this palette that i'm using today See this reflective coating, this sheen here? This is from Helio Cerulean. And you don't see this reflective surface here because I didn't use Helio Cerulean, I used Cobalt Turquoise. So this can be quite distracting 
That shiny is very obvious when you look at the surface from an angle, but not when you look at it directly from the front. And also there is this edge here. See this edge here? Earlier on when painting this shadow area, I cleaned my brush and tried to fit the shadow area into the highlighted area, but there is this edge here. So I'm not sure if this is specific to the paint. Cadmium Red Pale seems to complement Cobalt Turquoise quite nicely here. By nicely, I mean when you mix the two colors to produce a neutralized color, you can still see the individual colors show through. With certain mixes, when you try to create grays or neutralized colors, they will look rather dull. So um, those would not be uh, good mixes, but for mixes where you can still see the vibrancy, where you can still see individual colors, uh, those are very nice uh, grays. So that's it for this video, but before you go, I just want to let you know that I am selling off some of my excess watercolor paint to mix space, to get more colors to test, and also to create more limited color palette videos like this. So if you are interested to get some paint, some colors to test, you can check out the link in the video description below to see the list of colors that I am selling. Bye!